Hey guys, it's like the last night of Hanukkah. We really got to get through Maccabees. Jonathan heard that Demetrius's officers returned with a stronger than before force to make war on them. He set out from Jerusalem and men met them in Hamath. He sent spies to their camp and they reported that they were planning a night attack. When the sun set, Jonathan ordered his men to be ready under arms. The adversary heard that Jonathan's men were ready to battle. They were frightened and lit fires in their camp. Jonathan saw that the fires were burning and pursued them but could not overtake them because they crossed the river Eutherlorus. Jonathan turned aside against the Arabs who were called Zabadeans and defeated and plundered. Then Simon took Joppa by surprise. Jonathan retreated, called together the elders, and planned to build strongholds in Judea to increase the height of the walls and build a great mound between the citadel and the city to separate itself so they could not buy or sell in it. They gathered together to build up the city and the part of the east wall by the ravine had collapsed and replaced it with the so-called Chapathnatha. Simon built Ordin, Loveland, and fortified it with barred gates. Trifo undertook to become king of Asia raised his hand against King Antioch. He was afraid that Jonathan would get in the way, and he undertook to seize and destroy him. Jonathan went out to meet him with 40,000 men. Trifo was afraid. He received him with an honor and gave him presents, and introduced him to his friends, gave him equal commands over his forces, and sent to Jonathan. Why have you burdened all these people when there's no war between us? Send them home. You and a few men come with me to Ptolemus. And I will turn it over to you, along with the rest of the prisons, forces, and officials. Jonathan trusted him and did as he said and dismissed his troops. He took a thousand with him, and when Jonathan entered Ptolemus, the people closed the gates and seized him. They killed his troops with the sword. Trypho sent forces to Calvary, to Galilee. The great plan to destroy all Jonathan's men. They thought Jonathan perished with his men. They encouraged one another and marched away in close order ready to fight. But when the pursuers saw this, they turned back. The Lord's people returned and Judah mourned over Jonathan. They were frightened and all Israel mourned. The heathen around them rose up saying, They have no leader. Let's make war. Simon heard that Trypho had gathered strong forces to invade the land of Judah. He saw his people afraid, encouraged them saying, You know all that I and my brothers and my father's house have done for the law and for the sanctuary. As a result, my brother has perished for Israel's sake. I never wanted to spare my own life, for I am no better than my brother, but I will avenge my nation and sanctuary and your wives and your children, because the heathen have gathered out of hatred to destroy us. And the spirit of the people revived. They said, you, Simon, are our new leader. In place of Judas and Jonathan, carry out the war. We'll listen to you. So he called the fighting men together and made haste to finish the walls of Jerusalem and sent Jonathan, the son of Absalom, to Joppa, who drove out the men. Trypho set out from Ptolemus to invade Judah. He was holding Jonathan hostage, but he wasn't dead. Trypho heard that Simon hadn't risen to take the place of Jonathan, and he sent an envoy to him, saying, It is for money that your brother Jonathan owed the royal treasury in connection with the offices that he held that we are holding him. So send a hundred talents of silver and two of his sons as hostages, and when he's released, he won't revolt against us and we'll let him go. Simon knew that they were speaking treacherously, yet he sent to get the money and the children. He wanted to do everything he could to save Jonathan, lest the people should scoff at him and blame him. But Trypho wouldn't let Jonathan go. Morphic got his cavalry ready to go, but there was heavy snow. So he killed Jonathan. He was buried. Simon got the bones of his brother and buried him in Modin. Israel lamented for a long time. Simon built a high monument over the grave of his father and his brother. It was polished stone. He erected seven pyramids in a row. He put trophies on Armin and columns for an everlasting memorial and carved something. The monument still stands today. Trypho deal treacherously with King Antioch the younger and killed him and became king in his stead. He assumed the diadem of Asia and brought great calamity upon the country. Simon built strongholds, prisons with high towers, thick walls, buried gates, but he stored provisions in them. Simon chose men and sent them to King Demetrius that he should 
give the country relief from Trifo's plunder. King Demetrius answered him by letter. King Demetrius sends greetings to Simon the high priest and friend of the king and to the Jewish elder and nation. We received the gold crown and the palm branch you sent. We are ready to make lasting peace with you and to write our official granting immunity that you ask. We guarantee you and the stronghold you have built shall be yours. We have forgiven any oversights up to this time as well as the crown tax and also if you are able suitable person to be enrolled in an hour there shall be peace between us. It was the 170th year that the yoke of the heathen be lifted from Israel and the people began to write in their contracts and agreements in the first year of Simon, the great high priest and governor of the commander of Jews. Simon pitched against Gaza. The people asked for mercy. Simon came to terms with them and put them out of the city, purified the house where the idols were, expelled all the impurification, and settled men in who those who observed the law. He even built himself a dwelling there and fortified it. Men in the citadel were dying of starvation. They cried out to Simon to make terms with them, and he did. He expelled them from the citadel and purified it from, it for, from its defilement. There was much rejoicing because of the great enemy had been destroyed out of Israel. Observe the 236th day of the second month. <laughs> Obviously, that's not right. Number of the second month to be observed with gladness. And his men stayed at the temple mount facing the citadel. Simon made his son, Jonathan, commander of all his forces. King Demetrius gathered forces and went to Medina to get help to fight against Tryphos and Arsendes the king of Persia, <clears throat> and Media heard <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that Demetrius was in town, and he went and captured Demetrius and defeated his army. The land of Judah was at peace so long as Simon lived, <clears throat> he sought the good of his nation. He took Joba for report and made it to access the islands of the sea. He enlarged his nation and became master of the land. He gathered ca many captives, removed things that defiled the nations, and cultivated peace, and the land yielded its produce. Old men sat in the streets and talked about well-being. Young men put on splendor, wore like attire. He supposed towns with provisions, or he supported towns with provisions. He re he is renowned, spoken of to the ends of the earth. He made peace in the land. Israel rejoiced. No one was afraid. No one was left in the land to fight them. Kings were destroyed. He reestablished all those who had been humbled. He removed everyone who was lawless and wicked. He made the sanctuary glorious and increased equipment. It was reported in Rome as far as Sparta that Jonathan was dead, and they grieved bitterly and wrote to his brother Simon, the new high priest, on brass tablets to renew friendly relations and alliance. This is what the Spartan said. The chief magistrates and the city of Spartan sends greetings to Simon. The chief priests and elders and priests and the rest of the Jewish people are kinsmen. We were glad to hear of your splendor and wealth. We record the following. Numius, the son of Antius, and Antidas, the son of Jason, envoys of the Jews, came to us to renew their friendly relations with us. The people were leased to receive the pleased to receive the men with honor and to fight it among the public records and CC oh, must be right. Sorry guys. Among the public records and CC the high priest. Simon sent numerous and Rome with a great gold shield weighing a thousand pounds to confirm their alliance. The people said, How shall we thank Simon? For he and his brothers have stood fast and have driven the enemies of Israel and secured his freedom. On the eighteenth day of Elu in the hundred and seventy second year, that is in the third year of Simon the high priest, the prince of God's people, on frequent occasion, when wars have arisen, Simon the son of Matthias and the priests exposed themselves to danger, resisted the adversaries of their nation, so that the sanctuary and their law might be upheld. They have reflected great glory upon this nation. Jonathan rallied his nation because the high priest was gathered to his people. Simon fought for his nation, spent a great deal of money of his own, armed warlike men, and gave them wages, fortified towns of Judea and Bethsura, where the enemy formerly kept their arms. He stationed the garrison of Jews there. He fortified Joppa and the seacoast in <clears throat> Gazra and the border of Azatos, and settled Jews there and gave them means of restoration. When the people saw Simon's faithfulness he and glory, he designed to bring the nation. They made him their leader because of uprightness and fidelity and because he sought in every way to exalt his people. The heathen were driven out of the country and out of the city of David in Jerusalem. The heathen built for themselves a citadel from which they would go out and pollute the surrounding sanctuary and did great damage. Simon made the land safe, settling the Jews in it and building high walls. King Demetrius confirmed him in the high priesthood, sorry, in the priesthood, 
and made him one of his friends, for he had heard that he was addressed by the Romans as friends. So he went along. They resolved Simon to be their leader, to set them duties over the country, over arms, over fortification, until a true prophet should appear. And as he would take care of the sanctuary, all should obey him in the contract stated in his reign. He should be clothed in purple and gold. Nobody was allowed to gather in an assembly without him, nor contradict what he said or set aside his things. Disregarded him shall be liable for punishment. And all the people agreed. Simon accepted and became their high priest and their general and the governor of the Jews and priests. They ordered this degree inscribed on brass tablets and set it up in a conspicuous place, copies placed in the treasury so that Simon and his sons might have it. Antioch, the son of King Demetrius, sent a letter from the islands of the sea to Simon. It ran as follows. King Antioch sends greetings to Simon, the chief priest and governor of the Jewish nation. As some ruffians have made themselves master of the kingdom of our forefathers, I wish to claim the kingdom that I may restore it to its former state, and I have raised a large forces of mercenaries and prepared ships of war and proposed to land in the country and to go in search of men who ruined our country. I now guarantee to you all the immunities which the king before me have granted unto you and gifts too. I give to you the authority to coin your own money for your own country with your own stamp. Jerusalem and the sanctuary shall be free. All the arms you have prepared and the prisons you shall have remain yours. Royal obligations shall be remitted for you from this time forever. And when we get possession of our kingdom, we will glorify you, Simon, and your nation and the temple to the whole earth. And year this year, Antioch went into the country of his forefathers and pursued Trypho to Dornumes and came back from Rome with letters to the kings. Luke 6, Council of the Romans, sends greetings to Ptolemy. The envoy of the Jews came to us, and friends and allies to renew friendly relations, having been sent by Simon the high priest and Jewish people. They brought a gold shield weighing a thousand pounds. It is our pleasure, therefore, to write these to the kings, not to injure them or fight them in their towns or countries, and not to ally themselves with those who fight against them. We have determined to accept the shield from them. So, if any miscreants from their country comes to you, hand them over to Simon, so that he may punish them according to their law. He wrote the same message to King Demetrius and Atlas and Arethres and to Arsaces and to Samson and the Spartans and to Pamphylia and to Lycia and to Holocornos and to Rhodes and Phalaces and Cos and to the Sides and Aridus and to Gorti and Cornetus and Cyprus and Cyrene. King Antius attacked Dor on the second day. Simon sent him 2,000 picked men to fight for him along with silver gold and war materials but he would not accept them and disregarded all agreements and was estranged from him he sent one of his friends named athikonokis to him saying you're holding joppa and garza and the citadel in jerusalem cities in my kingdom you have done great injury to this country now give us your towns that you have seized in tribute or give me 500 talents of silver for the damage you've done or else we will make war on you so a Athenes, the king's force, came to Jerusalem, saw Simon's splendor and great pomp, and was amazed, and gave him the king's message. And Simon said to him in reply, We have neither taken other men's land, nor are we in possession of other man's property, but the inheritance of our forefathers. It was wrongfully held by our enemies at one time, but we hold firmly that inheritance of our forefathers. For Joppa and Gaza, which you demanded, while they have done great damage to our people, we will give a hundred talents for them. And he went back to the king in anger and reported the words and the splendor and all that he had seen. And the king was extremely angry. Trypho embarked a ship. Fifty-one... Sorry. Hello? The inmate. King appointed Sendebez, commander of chief of the sea coast, and gave him infantry and cavalry. They came before the camp. The king pursued Trypho. Sendebas began to provoke people and invade Judea and took people captive and killed them. He built walls of Kendron and stationed forces so that they may go out and make raids on the highways as the king ordered. John went up for Garza and told Simon what the sentries has done. Simon called in his two eldest sons, Judas and John, and said to them, I and my brothers have fought the battles of Israel from our youth until today. We have succeeded in delivering Israel many times, but now I am old and you are old enough to take my place and go out and fight for our nation. The help may the help come from that comes from heaven be with you. He chose two hundred and fifty thousand soldiers and cavalry marched against the Sendalus, and there was a stream of people 
who were afraid to cross, so he went first. Sendibars and his army were routed. Many fell wounded. Judas, John's brother, was wounded. They burned up the towers of Azotus and returned to Judas in peace. Now Ptolemy, the son of Abilus, had been appointed governor over the plain of Jericho and had a great deal of silver and gold, for he was the son-in-law of the high priest. He was elated, and he plotted deceitfully against Simon to remove him. Simon was visiting in towns and providing for their care, and he went down to Jericho with his sons, Matthias and Judas, and Abel's the son deceitfully entertained them in a fortress called Doc, D-O-K. They had a great banquet, and when Simon and his sons were drunk, Ptolemy went to the banquet hall to attack Simon and killed him and his sons, and it was a great act of treachery, returning evil for good. When Ptolemy wrote to the king for aid. He sent to his people to take possession of Jerusalem of Temple Mount. A man ran ahead to Gars and informed that John and his father brother had perished, and they were about to come kill him. He was amazed. The men and seized the men who came to destroy him. The rest of the acts of John and his wars and exploits, the building and his deeds are all written in the chronicles of the high priesthood as he became the high priest after his father.